This newborn baby opened up her eyes for the first time and looked at her mother. When the mother saw this strange detail, her heart stopped immediately. Amelia and Ethan's world turned upside down when they saw their newborn's eyes. The pupils were whitish. It looked odd, but it was worse than they thought. Soon after, Gia was diagnosed with retinoblastoma, a rare childhood cancer that attacks the eyes. The cancer consumes the eyes and harms the nerves. While it is a deadly illness, the doctors had hopes that Gia would beat it. After all, 95% of cases survive till teenage age. Yet, this fact was no consolation to the parents. They felt their lives would be over in a second if anything were to happen to their baby. Amelia and Ethan did not let their grief stop them from caring for their daughter. They consulted with the doctors and took her to the best hospitals. Everyone did what they could. Unfortunately, despite a valiant fight, the cancer only got worse. And it eventually took their precious Gia just before her first birthday far earlier than anyone expected. This brought untold pain and heartbreak upon Amelia and Ethan. Their first baby was gone just like that, but Amelia was hurt the most. She had been the one who had carried and nursed the baby. She had been the one who cooed her and sang her lullabies to sleep. Amelia was totally consumed by grief and she struggled to cope. It hit her so bad that seeing children brought flashbacks of Gia's innocent smile and playful laughter, which only haunted her. Ethan was equally devastated, but he knew he had to be strong for both himself and his wife. He stood by Amelia's side, offering his unwavering support. He knew Amelia secretly blamed herself for Gia, and he knew she was questioning if they could ever experience the joy of parenthood again. But Ethan knew it was not enough to give up their dreams of a happy family with kids. Before this loss, Amelia and Ethan were a young couple who lived a picture-perfect life. They were high school lovers who got separated in their college years before they met each other again by accident. The young couple resumed their relationship, and soon they were married. Amelia and Ethan had so many things in common, and one of them was a desire for a large and happy family. This was why their joy had been boundless when Amelia got pregnant with their first child. They didn't then realize that it would be the beginning of their nightmares. The pain of losing Gia was still raw when they faced another blow. After waiting a year, Amelia and Ethan decided to try for another child. They were hoping to fill the void left by their loss, and they felt it was time to let go and continue their dreams of starting a family. But fate had other plans. Their second child was Ethan Jr., and as soon as he was born, there it was. The little boy was also diagnosed with retinoblastoma. Ethan's stay on Earth was even shorter than his sister Gia. He was gone after 14 weeks. This second loss plunged Amelia deeper into despair. She questioned everything she knew and grieved deeply. She became convinced that having children was a cruel twist of fate. How could she ever have a child when she knew it held the potential for such devastating loss? The doctors, too, were surprised by this. While it's hard to really pinpoint the exact causes of retinoblastoma, genetics are known to play a large role. But Amelia had no history or even family history of retinoblastoma or any other eye defects. Neither did Ethan. Retinoblastoma is a very rare cancer, so it affecting two kids from the same parents was both rare and shocking. It was a tragedy, and they couldn't begin to imagine the pain Amelia and Ethan felt. But Ethan, however, held on to a sliver of hope. He felt the pain of the loss of two children, and he understood Amelia's fear. But Ethan also believed that love could heal all wounds, no matter how deep. Two years passed in a blur of grief counseling, and they had both taken the tentative steps towards rebuilding their lives. Then, one unexpected morning, something happened that changed everything. Amelia discovered she was pregnant again. Amelia had woken up that day feeling nauseous and sick. Her mind refused to accept it, but a doctor's appointment confirmed what she thought was impossible. She was indeed pregnant. The news hit both of them like a bombshell. Amelia had been on the pills, as they both weren't ready for a child yet. Amelia was terrified. Another child? Could they face the possibility of losing another child? One thing was clear. Amelia knew that she did not want to experience that unbearable pain again. The fear of retinoblastoma striking again was too strong for her. 
and Amelia decided on her own that she did not want the baby at all. Whatever Ethan said would not matter, she thought. Ethan, however, saw this as a chance for them to heal as a family. He knew his wife's fears, and he knew it was because, deep down, she wanted children, but their losses had traumatized her. Ethan knew that his wife would never be happy in this life without kids, and he didn't want that for her or himself, so Ethan did what he did best. He held his wife close and whispered promises of support into her ears. He shared his unwavering belief that they could face anything, anything at all, together. And he wanted her to share in his hope. Maybe this could be different this time. Sure, it might turn out terribly, but it just might turn out well, too. The weight of their past losses hung heavy, but Ethan's words ignited a flicker of hope within Amelia. Could this be their chance to experience the joy of parenthood once again? But before she agreed, Ethan had to promise her one thing, that it would be the last time they tried for a child. As much as Ethan did not like the proposition, he agreed. It was her body, and she had the final say. Amelia's pregnancy was a tornado of different emotions. For every time she felt excitement, there was an equal feeling of crippling fear of losing another child. Her heart hammered in her chest at each doctor's appointment as the doctor examined the baby. Amelia would scrutinize the sonograms, ask a million questions, and read every letter of her medical report. She was searching for any sign, anything unusual, or any hint of the disease that had stolen her precious Gia and Ethan Jr. Ethan sensed his wife's anxiety, and he became her steadfast pillar of stability. He took over most of the housework and made sure she didn't have to do anything unless he wasn't there. In addition, he surprised her with little gifts to cheer her up and take her mind off her fears. Ethan knew that anxiety would not help her in any way, so he did all he could to alleviate her worrying. He constantly reminded her of the medical advancements that had been made in treating retinoblastoma. In the worst case scenario, it would not be as deadly as it was in Gia's and Ethan Jr.'s case. This was Ethan's way of offering hope, where fear threatened to take hold. While fear lingered in Amelia's heart, Ethan's unwavering support kept a flicker of hope alive. While Ethan's support was a lifeline, Amelia craved a deeper connection with others who understood her pain. She found solace in online support groups for parents who had lost children to different kinds of ailments. Here, Amelia could share her fears and anxieties without judgment or without putting too much burden on whoever was listening. By connecting with others who had walked a similar path of grief, Amanda healed a little. Despite her constant worrying, hope began to grow bigger within Amelia, much like her baby. She actually started to look forward to the baby's coming. When she slept, she would dream of herself carrying her baby, and when she was awake, she would write down nice baby names. Six months into the pregnancy, Amelia knew it was time to really start preparing for the baby's arrival. So she started all over again. She insisted on painting the nursery herself. The walls were painted with soft yellow, a neutral color that wouldn't evoke the memory of a lost child. She also bought tiny clothes, onesies and sleepers in all shades of yellow and green. This was because she was unable to bring herself to choose pink or blue, the traditional colors for baby girls and boys. The fear of jinxing this pregnancy by assuming the baby's gender was just too strong. The fear of the past repeating itself was constantly present as the preparations reminded her of the children she had lost. Then, the long-awaited delivery day finally arrived. There was tension in the air, along with raw anticipation. Deep down, both parents desperately prayed for a healthy child. As they wheeled her into the labor room, Amelia clutched Ethan's hand so tightly that her knuckles turned white. The past year had been a roller coaster filled with equal moments of excitement, followed by crushing waves of fear. But today, they would finally know their fate. The birth process itself was a blur, with Ethan waiting outside while the professionals handled the delivery. Then finally, Ethan heard the most incredible sound, his baby's cry. Tears streamed down Ethan's face as he rushed into the room. His child was born safe and sound. As he cut the umbilical cord, his heart overflowed with love. He had thought that he would never experience the joy of fatherhood again, but here he was. Amelia was weak, but exhilarated. The baby was given to her and she cradled the tiny bundle in her arms. Relief washed over her as she carried the baby. It was a beautiful baby girl with her delicate features and a full head of dark hair, just like her mother. This baby was a miracle she wouldn't take for granted, and she felt bad for not wanting her at first. The baby stopped crying as Ethan cooed over his daughter. 
Amelia was still too weak to speak, so she simply held her close. She was savoring the warmth of the baby and the sweet scent of newborn life. In that moment, all their fears, questions, and worries seemed to fade away. All that mattered was the tiny miracle nestled in Amelia's arms. But the calm and peace shattered as quickly as it arrived. The baby girl opened her big, curious eyes for the first time. She looked around and her eyes landed on her mother. As soon as Amelia saw the baby's eyes open, a gasp escaped her lips. She shivered in shock as her arms froze. Ethan could see the horror on his wife's face, so he looked at his baby. The baby looked normal and perfect in Ethan's eyes, but then he saw the strange detail that made Amelia's heart stop. It was the baby's eyes. There was something very strange about them. The expected brown irises that both Ethan and Amelia had were nowhere to be seen. Instead, the baby's irises shimmered with an unusual, almost otherworldly violet hue. The baby's eyes were almost purple. The color was so unlike anything Amelia had ever seen, and it sent a jolt of fear through her. The memories of Gia and Ethan Jr.'s initial eye problems, which were the first red flags of the devastating eye cancer, flooded back with terrifying clarity. Amelia went into panic immediately, and her breath caught in her throat. Before she could even cry out, her vision went blurry. She fainted right there in her hospital bed, leaving Ethan and the nurses both shocked and confused. The doctors scrambled to understand what had just happened, while the nurses escorted Ethan out of the ward. Ethan was a mess. He couldn't even help the tears streaming down his face. The joy of their newborn daughter had been abruptly overshadowed by a new, terrifying unknown. When Amelia woke up, she was disoriented and weak. As the sterile white of the hospital room came into her focus, her fear came back to grip her heart before she even remembered why. Then, Ethan's concerned face came into her view. As she saw her husband's face, she felt relief, then worry. Ethan explained to her that she had fainted after the baby opened her eyes. That was when Amelia remembered her baby's eyes. The color was both unexpected and unusual. Amelia's fear tripled. Could it be? Was this another case of retinoblastoma showing in their newborn daughter's eyes? Amelia felt both shame and guilt. She asked herself why she had selfishly risked another child's life. But Ethan sensed her pain and rushed to her side. He told her that they didn't know anything for sure yet. The doctors were running tests, eye scans, and everything they could think of. Best they could do was hope and pray. The next few days were a tense wait, and each second was a battle between hope and fear. Amelia barely slept, and she was haunted by the ghost of her past losses. The nurses checked on her constantly, but their reassurances did not help her. Ethan researched online through countless medical articles on unusual eyes. Most articles spoke of blue or gray eyes, as some mentioned green or hazel, but nothing about the unusual violet color that their daughter had. There was no mention of retinoblastoma in connection with violet eyes, but the doctors would have the final say. In the nursery, the baby, whom they named Luna, was a spectacle. She was unaffected by the worry around her, so she only smiled and cooed, her innocent violet eyes sparkling with curiosity. Yet all Amelia could ask herself was if Luna's violet eyes were truly harmless, or if this was just a cruel disease. Amelia longed for answers and prayed that this time things would be different and that their miracle child would be healthy and whole. Finally, the doctor arrived with the test results, and the results were shocking. Luna's violet eyes were not a sign of eye cancer or any defect. Rather, it was just an extremely rare genetic anomaly that was completely harmless. There was absolutely no link between the baby's unusual eyes and retinoblastoma. Violet eyes in newborns were incredibly rare, and Luna's case was totally unique. Only a few people in the entire world have violet eyes, and one famous example was the actress Elizabeth Taylor. Amelia broke down in tears of joy and relief. Her baby was really going to be fine. She embraced her baby, and the deep, dark fear she had been feeling was replaced by love. Ethan was satisfied. Now he had his family. What a story. Do you know anyone with such unique eyes? Share your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.